What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this video is going to be about water cooling, tubing, uh, specifically rigid tubing, and even more specifically, uh, the difference working with PETG and acrylic. I just got in a new shipment of acrylic tubing, which kind of reminded me that I often get asked uh, why I'm using acrylic when seemingly everyone else is using PETG. So I figured it'd be a good opportunity to sh sort of uh, share my thoughts on the subject. So just to get this out of the way up front, this video is not meant to be a scientific description of each of the materials uh, and what makes them different sort of chemically. Uh, rather, more the experience that I've had working with each of the materials. Uh, it's not me telling you one material is better than the other. Um, although I obviously prefer acrylic for several reasons, which we'll get into. Um, but this is more or less just to share an opinion uh, and maybe encourage you guys to um, experiment with both materials uh, when you may have automatically just gone for, say, PETG. Now, it seems to me that when people first get into water cooling, they automatically go for PETG tubing. That seems to have become the industry standard. Uh, so... There probably aren't very many of you out there that have actually tried using acrylic aside from maybe some of the guys that started doing, doing water cooling before uh, PETG became sort of the mainstream material. Now like many of you, when I first got into it, I was using PETG. I just assumed that that was the superior material, so that's what I used. Uh, my first three or four builds uh, I made with PETG tubing. Um, I wasn't necessarily dissatisfied with the results. But I decided one day um, that I just wanted to try acrylic. I wanted to see um, what the differences were and, you know, sort of what made PETG uh, the superior option. And to my surprise, I actually liked acrylic a lot better, and I haven't gone back since then. Not that I'm expecting you guys to be able to tell the difference by me holding these up. Uh, from a visual standpoint, PETG and acrylic look almost identical, especially, you know, once they've got fluid in them and whatnot. Now, acrylic does have um, a little bit better clarity. Uh, it tends to hold up better long term uh, to staining and has a little bit better chemical resistance. But all in all, I think when it comes to looks, um, there's probably not going to be much of a difference for uh, almost anyone that's looking at it. A PETG is a very soft material. It's very flexible. It's got a lot of elasticity to it. Um, and it's soft enough that you can essentially cut it with any sharp object. Um, heck, you could probably even use scissors or razor blade. I mean, um, really just about anything will cut PETG. Although, People do favor using specific tools for cutting it, but um, it's not difficult to cut because of how soft it is. Now acrylic, on the other hand, is a lot more rigid. Uh, it's got a little bit of flex to it, but not nearly as much as PEDG, and it's a harder, more brittle material, so you definitely have to be specific about what type of tool you're using to cut it so that you don't crack or splinter the material. Um, most people use some sort of saw that has a real fine uh, tooth to it um, and that'll kind of cut through it no problem um, but if you don't have the right tool uh, it may be a little bit more difficult to to cut uh, in that sense so both materials essentially look the same they cost the same amount of money and uh, as far as I'm concerned they're both easy to cut and handle the main difference is going to come into play when it comes time to heat bend and install the tubing uh, which is where I lean towards acrylic and where I think it's superior in multiple ways now, I think one of the biggest hurdles to get over when you're first getting into water cooling is um, if you want to use rigid tubing, it can be quite intimidating when it comes down to sort of heating and bending the tubing. Um, at the end of the day, it all boils down to practice. Uh, there's no good way for me to really explain to you how to heat and bend the tubing. Um, I can sort of give you some, some guidelines, but um, ultimately it boils down to practice. It's more of a feeling um, that you get when you start to work with the material. Fortunately, uh, tubing is pretty cheap, so you can always buy a lot more than you need, 
and um, just you know you're gonna have a lot of failures but as you do it more and more uh, you're gonna eventually get pretty good with the material so uh, that being said when it comes to the difference in bending acrylic and PETG um, both of them are gonna require some level of practice and getting the hang of so I'm not really gonna say that one of them uh, bends easier than the other although I will sort of let you in on what the differences are. So if you're working with PETG, you'll find that it becomes malleable uh, a lot quicker and at a lower temperature, uh, which is why I suspect that a lot of people uh, like working with it because, um, I guess for lack of a better term, it requires less patience. Uh, the only downside to that is there's also less margin for error. So uh, you really have to pay a lot closer attention to how much heat um, you're giving the PETG because it will start to bubble up and melt um, very quickly. Um, but I think once you sort of get the hang of it, you can avoid a lot of that, um, but uh, still something to consider when you're doing it. Now acrylic, on the other hand, requires a higher temperature to get to that malleable state, and it will take a lot longer um, when you're when you're holding the tubing over the um, heat gun, uh, you have to be a lot more patient because it takes just I, I, I've never timed it. It feels like it's about three times as long um, as far as how long you're holding it before it gets to the point uh, where it's safe to go ahead and start bending it. I should also note that when I'm bending PETG, uh, I have my heat gun on the low heat setting and I'm typically holding the tubing a little bit closer to the gun, whereas when I'm bending acrylic, I have it on the high heat setting, but I'm holding it much further away uh, from the gun as to not apply too much heat in a short amount of time. So this is the part that is kind of difficult to explain. Uh, it's almost something that you have to just experience and feel uh, to understand what I'm talking about, but I'll try my best. Um, but when you're bending uh, PETG, because of how um, elastic it is, uh, it has a tendency to want to spring back into, you know, the shape that it comes in, which is a straight tube. So what will happen is, is if you're trying to make a really tight 90 on it, um, you'll be holding it in place and you'll feel like you have a nice 90, even if you're holding it in a jig. And then when it, you know, hardens again, it wants to ever so slightly spring back into a more obtuse angle and it's very subtle but for someone like me that's a stickler for very nice uh, and uniform bends I really try my best to try to get them as perfect as possible so that can be a little bit frustrating and also where you do your bends you tend to get a little bit of uh, deformity in in the plastic um, I'm, I'm thinking that's probably just a result of the way the material uh, just behaves. Um, but again, it's another one of those things that when you look up closely and you see it, uh, it's a little bit frustrating for someone like myself who tends to be more of a perfectionist. Now with acrylic, even though it you can bend it a little bit, it's got a little bit of flexibility to it, uh, it doesn't have the same sort of uh, springy action that PETG has. So when I'm doing a bend with uh, acrylic, I'm able to very precisely heat up the area that I want to bend, make that nice 90. I get a very nice, clean bend without really any noticeable uh, d deformities in the material. And the straight sections um, stay very straight and it never really wants to kind of spring itself back open again. Um, and again, like I mentioned before, with the PETG, it's very subtle, um, but I notice it, so obviously uh, it's all going to boil down to preference when it comes down to that. Now, another thing I like about bending acrylic that may be contrary to what you've heard is that uh, I think acrylic is much more forgiving when it comes to uh, sort of making mistakes or, or not getting your bends perfect. Uh, with PETG... I feel like once you commit to the bend, um, if you don't get the perfect bend the first time, it's really difficult to heat it up and especially a straight section, it's very difficult to get it straight again. 
Um, not so much the case with acrylic. I've had very good success with um, sort of, you know, uh, and this isn't really an issue when you only have one bend per tube because you can always cut it to length. But if you've got a tube with multiple bends in it and let's say you make your first bend perfect and then the second bend is a little bit off um, and you want to go back and try to fix it a little bit, um, I have always had better results with acrylic on sort of tweaking that a little bit and coming back out with nice straight pieces. Uh, it's always been a struggle with PETG. I feel like I always end up having to scratch um, those tubes, scratch, scrap those tubes, and um, just start over again, which can be frustrating. Another nice thing about acrylic is that when you get your tube bent and ready to install, um, so these pipe reamers here, uh, you can't really use this on PETG. It's just, it's too soft of a material. Um, I usually clean up the ends of my tubing with just a, um, like a razor blade or, uh, you know, utility knife or whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, cause it's, it's so soft. You can literally just kind of cut into it and do what you need to do. But acrylic's really nice because you can use the reamer you can really round over your edges nicely and you know you can sand it down um, very nicely on a sanding block so it gives you a lot more flexibility and the ability to really fine tune um, and polish off the ends of your tubing um, which is a lot more difficult to do with PETG. Now that may not seem like a very big deal but when you're installing this tubing into your compression fittings if you don't have the ends of your tubing uh, nice and polished off or rounded over, whatever you want to call it, um, you can really slice up those O-rings uh, inside, uh, inside the fittings and it may or may not cause issues or leaks, whatever, um, but you could potentially get some of the, the little pieces of the O-ring get caught in the tubing, maybe start you know uh, flowing through your loop and if it gets caught in one of your blocks that could cause issues with flow. So I guess to summarize, the only real benefit that I can see to using PETG is that it bends faster. Uh, but unless you're just sitting there all day long, like mass producing bends, I, I don't really see why that even matters. Um, you know, if you have the option to use what I would consider a more superior material, um, but you know, takes you a little bit longer, uh, I think the end result is definitely worth it. I think that acrylic looks better. Um, I think that it behaves better when you are bending it. Um, I just, you know, in my opinion, I've just been a lot happier with it. I feel like I get um, much cleaner bends and it's a little less frustrating than using PETG. So after having said all of that, I um, just want you guys to know this video is not me telling you that acrylic is better. I think it's better, but that's just my opinion. Um, what it really boils down to is that you know, the tubing's cheap, and as far as I'm concerned, it's worth exploring both options. Try them both out. Get a feel for both of them. Don't just automatically assume that you should be using PETG because that's what everybody else is using. Um, you know, there are a lot of other enthusiasts, aside from myself, that prefer acrylic tubing, um, and I feel like we all share the same opinion that we just kind of feel that we're able to work with it better and get better results from it. So um, again, this is just me saying give it a shot. Um, if you don't like it, you know, use PETG by all means. Uh, I've done a lot of really nice looking builds with PETG. I don't think it's bad. Um, I just think that acrylic is better. So as always guys, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I always try my best to try to answer as many of them as possible. Um, but yeah, I always appreciate you guys checking out the channel and I will see you guys in the next video.